The L.A. soccer scene got flipped upside down yesterday morning with news that the Galaxy Kurt Anolfo has been let go. Ziggy Schmidt comes in and then the announcement of Mexican international Jonathan Dos Santos on a big money transfer from Villarreal. Well, by the way, keep it quiet, but uh, LAFC making no, wasting no time whatsoever to announce their first head coach in the history of LAFC, the incoming expansion club, announcing Thursday. Join us now. The first head coach of LAFC, Bob Bradley. Bob, it's Dunny and Christian Jack. How are you doing? I'm good, guys. How are you? Doing well, Bob. Great, uh, thank long, you. long time no talk. Congratulations. Uh, I know it's been uh, a whirlwind 24 hours. I watched the uh, introduction at the National History Museum of Los Angeles earlier today. Uh, just kind of the emotions for you uh, wrapping up this 24 hours being named the first head coach of LAFC. Yeah, honored. That's number one. Uh, thrilled for the opportunity to come back to L.A. Uh, but when I say thrilled, the reason I say that most of all is because uh, my football experiences, my football vision ideas, uh, at the end of all the different things I've done, my commitment to, to find a place where I could put all of that into action, where there was a a vision by a club of, of how to do things. And uh, you know, I've had different conversations along the way with MLS teams. And my starting point was always sort of, well, look, if the idea is just what's it going to take to get into the playoffs, then I'm not your guy. Um, so I, I, I was totally uh, impressed as, as this process moved along with the ownership, the vision, obviously the, the understanding of how important it is to connect with the heart of L.A., uh, and then as I got to meet the people who had been on board, uh, the energy and the vibe is incredible. So, yeah, I'm, I'm really thrilled to be part of something like this. Bob, congratulations. This is Christian in Toronto. It's great to talk to you. Um, it's, it's, it's exciting to see an, uh, somebody make the, the MLS again, and, and I'll use the slogan that they use a lot, their league of choice. And I know it's something that, that your son has used as well. Um, how different is the league that you return to that you were in, in, in prior? I know you've kept a very close eye on it. How different, let's start on the field. How different do you think it is now in, in that time that it has evolved? And, and what are the key differences for you that you've seen in MLS over the last decade or so? Uh, certainly the league has grown. There's more teams, uh, fantastic stadiums uh, in this last period, uh, more big names. Uh, you know, if you ask me to break it down more on the field, I think in the last uh, two years uh, in particular, I, I think that there are more games where the tactical level is higher. Uh, so I think you see teams that uh, have some different ideas and create some different challenges, and then you see other teams that have to prepare for what that means. So I, I think that's been an important step. Uh, but having said all that, um, uh Football is football, too. And, and so, you know, uh, you know, earlier this year when, when Greg spoke about the roster uh, for Toronto FC and said this might be the deepest one in history, uh, look, I'm impressed with the, the, the moves that Toronto has made to build a, a really good roster. But if I were sitting with Greg and I, I put 2,000 Chicago Fire on the, on the table next to his <laughs> – uh, I think uh, Dunny would agree. I tell you what, we'd have a really good football discussion figuring out whose <laughs> roster was better. That's great. I, I just imagine how long C.J. Brown's six studs would be in a game like that. <laughs> um, hey, Bob, uh, first off, it's always been a pleasure to kind of be around you on the training field, whether it's with the national team or a short time with Chivas USA or just following you guys with the U.S. national team uh, you know, throughout the different tournaments in the United States. But I've always been really fascinated with your decisions uh, because it seems as, as important as the football is, as important as the, the job, air quotes, of job opportunity is, that the life experience uh, for you and your family have been just as important. Is that kind of a, a fair assumption, uh, assumption to make? Yeah, I, I think in, in our family, the idea of uh, looking for challenges and testing yourself and uh, experiencing different cultures uh, and, and obviously uh, 
in our family, oftentimes that includes football. Uh, but I think that that all comes together. Uh, you know, I, I, uh, I love my time in MLS. Um, and obviously I got the, the ultimate honor to coach the national team. And, and then when that was finished, uh, I, I felt that uh, it was time to, to, to test myself in other places. And obviously um, the Egypt moment was once in a lifetime. Uh, and, you know, when you consider politically what was going on and, and, and then, you know, how we were able to still with, with that group of players try to be, you know, uh, an example of, of what happens when you're united at a time when a whole country is divided. Uh, uh, that group of players, you know, I think of guys like Mohamed Salah and Mohamed Omede and, and uh, Ahmed Aghazi, who's just uh, on a loan this year to West Brom. These were young guys that I brought into the national team. And, and you know, Brian, I, I mean, look, I, I, when I was in Chicago, I had uh, Carlos, Demarcus, Josh yeah. Wolf. Um, you know, when I got to Metro Stars, uh, Ricardo Clark and uh, Mike McGee and Eddie Gavin and some kid named Michael Bradley and another one named Danilo Silva, who is a Brazilian who, who has done really well over the years at uh, Dynamo Kiev. And then, you know, Sasha and Johnny Bornstein and, and Brad Gazan. You know, look, I always felt that, that in all my, my stops, that my sense of how to move young talent along and help them fit. And then when I go to places like Egypt and Norway and France, and I have a chance to work with some young players in those situations and do the same things, uh, you know, look, I'm, I'm, I, I, I go into every situation the same. I have my football ideas. I try to open up minds to, to see the game a little differently. Uh, sometimes you get a bunch of guys that buy in and, and, and that's something that, that they, they really uh, never forget. And then sometimes the way the game works is with that particular group, it might not come off, but it hasn't changed me. It's, it's only made me more, more determined and more passionate. Bob, it's tremendous to hear the passion in your voice when you you know, list so many different players that you've worked with there, and, and I'm sure you could go on and on. You get an opportunity now to do that again. You know, you could be talking in five, ten years about players uh, who you work with on this team that have made a big difference in your life as well. You have a blank page of, of paper where you can go out and, and establish this squad along with John Thorrington. How much of a pull and excitement is that for you as well in, in, in shaping this franchise going forward? Yeah, that 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 idea, that that part of sitting there with uh, a blank board in front of you, and now starting to think, uh, who are the first pieces? Uh, what kind of names? Uh, you know, obviously, on one level, if you bring a big name, it it can be uh, uh, such a, a huge moment. When I was in Chicago, and the first signing was Peter Nova, we had respect in the Polish American community immediately. Hmm. Uh, but, you know, a couple times today, I, I also said, as much as everybody wants to talk about the big name in L.A., the, the idea that Jerry West drafted a young Kobe Bryant and right in front of everybody in, in Los Angeles, Kobe became a star. Uh, that part of it is, is also incredible. I and mean, that's, that's a little what happened in Egypt with Mohamed Salah. Uh, you know, I had a, a young player when I went to France named Lise Mousset. And, you know, I get there, they've played 14 games. Lise has played 100 minutes, and he's got one goal. And they asked me, do you want to put him out on loan? And I said, well, let me have a week first. And a week later, I said, he's our best forward. And so in 24 games to finish that season, Lise scored 14 goals. Hmm. And everybody that came to Stade Ocean left talking about Lise Mousset. And at the end of the season, Bournemouth came in and paid you know, over seven million pounds, and Lise was was on to the, the the Premier League. But that feeling that right in front of uh, the fans and the supporters and the love, here is this young player, and all of a sudden he's exciting, and that's who people talk about. You know, I, I think our league has come far enough along that. When you talk about big names, they come in different categories. So, yeah, and the idea of working with John and Tom Penn and, 
and and trying to uh, spread our net in every direction. I, I think it's uh, it's a challenge, but it's also a, a wonderful opportunity. Hey, Bob, uh, congratulations. Truly appreciate the time. I, I know you've been in, insanely busy today, but uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to come on with us. Good. Talk to you guys again. Thanks, Thanks Bob. Bob. Appreciate it.